On the afternoon of July 25, 2021, an officer-involved shooting occurred at 1718 First Street in Wasco, California, resulting in the death of a Kern County Sheriff's Office deputy. The following presentation is intended to help bring context to the facts surrounding this case. The following presentation contains a map of the location of the incident, radio traffic, body-worn camera video, and photos of the scene. Some of the audio and video has been edited to protect the privacy of the victims involved and to avoid the release of information that state law prohibits the sheriff's office from releasing. The redactions and edits do not affect the depiction of events presented in the video. Some of the audio and visuals we're about to present may be disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. On July 25, 2021, at 1 p.m., Kern County Sheriff's Office deputies were dispatched to 1718 First Street for numerous reports of a man armed with a firearm and shooting subjects inside the residence. 911, what's the address? I need somebody really quick. There's someone with a gun in the house. What's the address? It's 1718 First Street in Wasco. And who is in the house? Um, um, a family's in the house. There's kids. Okay. Who is in the house with a firearm? This is for dad. Okay. He's shooting. He's shooting. <laughs> deputies arrived to the scene at 1.05 p.m. Within minutes, deputies approached the residence. Immediately, a suspect began shooting at deputies from inside. The following video is from Senior Deputy Charles Shin's department-issued body-worn camera. Control on Moscow, we have two Clifford, please. Oh! Hey! The deputies were not struck by gunfire. They took cover and set up a perimeter around the house. Deputies requested the SWAT team respond, along with additional units and the California Highway Patrol. Unbeknownst to responding deputies, prior to their arrival, the suspect had already shot and killed his two sons and his wife. One of the shootings was captured on a neighbor's home surveillance camera. The following video will not be played in full due to its graphic nature. Please note the timestamp on the video is incorrect and the camera did not capture any sound. As the SWAT team began arriving, they assumed control of the perimeter. The following video is from Senior Deputy Shin's body-worn camera. At this point, the camera was propped up on the sidewalk after it had fallen off his uniform. Yeah, okay. You see about 70% of it. You missed the far right side. Okay. You want to... Right see that number? Hey, hey, uh, who's driving? Justin? Hey, Justin, let's angle it this way. I want to block that truck in case he tries to leave no. on the truck. Yeah, they don't know to the angle it this way so we can see the door. So are you going to back up or we want to angle it towards the truck? Yeah. Yeah, you can see the truck. It would have been better to go like that. Than that. During this time, dispatchers received numerous 911 calls from inside the residence. 911, what is the location of your emergency? Yes, I need an ambulance, please. What's the address? 1718. And what is your name? 1718 Park Street. And what is your name? Jose. Jose? Why do you need an ambulance? Because my son is on the floor. He got shot. Who shot him? I don't know. Okay, how old is your son? Uh, Where was he shot? Okay, wait, Jose? Jose, I need to transfer you to the fire, to the ambulance, okay? Where is your son in the house? I know, they're on their way. But I need to know where in the house he is. Well, right here, but there's some other people. I need the paramedics to get him coming down. Okay, they're, they're driving there as fast as they can. 
Wait, hold on. Where in the house is he? Is he in the living room, in the kitchen? Nine one one. What is the location of your emergency? They're on their way, Jose. Where are you? Okay, I've got the address. Where are you? There's somebody else in Who else is in there? Jose, have you been drinking or doing drugs today? No, no, I haven't doing nothing. Okay, what happened? And the ambulance. They, they are driving. They are driving as fast as they can. I've got them. I've, I've got them driving. Okay. Okay. The SWAT team initiated callouts to the suspect in both English and Spanish in an attempt to peacefully resolve the situation. The following videos are from Deputy Thomas Aguilar's department-issued body-worn camera. At this point, the SWAT team was made aware of an ongoing open line between 911 dispatchers and a phone inside the residence with what sounded like labored breathing. Believing there were victims inside in need of immediate medical assistance, the SWAT team quickly formed a hostage rescue team. At 2.53 p.m., SWAT team members approached the residence. As they were moving toward the front door, the suspect began shooting at them. SWAT team members returned fire. Two SWAT operators were struck by the suspect's gunfire, and two additional SWAT operators were hit by shrapnel from the suspect. The following video is from Senior Deputy Shin's body-worn camera. By this time, Senior Deputy Shin had relocated to the outer perimeter to the east of the residence. Controlling Wasco David 2, I believe we have an officer down. Six, an officer down. Yeah, there's an officer down. He's an officer down behind the car, up front! Controlling Wasco David 2, apron on a officer down. Uh, we need medical aid to move up. We'll bring him out. Come hey, back, come back, come back. What do you need? We gotta get him out! What do you need, bro? Get him back! 
I'm coming up! SWAT team members pulled the injured deputies to safety and began rendering medical aid. Both deputies were transported to a local hospital for further treatment. Despite life-saving efforts, Deputy Philip Campus succumbed to his injuries. The additional SWAT member who was transported to the hospital, Senior Deputy DeZander Guerrero, was treated and later released. The SWAT team remained on scene and attempted to communicate with the suspect but were unsuccessful. Throughout the standoff, the suspect fired rounds at the SWAT team from inside the house. The suspect is captured on camera looking through the fence on the side of the house in the direction of deputies and the SWAT team. The suspect is armed with a rifle. At 6.28 p.m., the suspect exited a side door of the residence and began climbing onto the roof while armed with an AK-47 style rifle and a handgun. An additional officer-involved shooting occurred and the suspect was struck. This is the moment the suspect exits the residence and climbs onto the roof. Within moments, an officer-involved shooting occurs. The suspect is struck and can be seen hanging off the side of the roof. Here's a closer look at the firearms the suspect had on the roof of the residence. The suspect, later identified as Jose Manuel Ramirez Jr., age 41, was removed from the roof and pronounced deceased at the scene by medical aid. Deputies then entered the residence and located two deceased victims inside and a third deceased victim in the side yard. They were later identified as Viviana Ruiz Ramirez, age 42, Jose Manuel Ramirez III, age 24, and Angel Manuel Ramirez, age 17. Here's a closer look at the multiple firearms the suspect was armed with. Detectives responded to the scene and assumed the investigation. A total of 15 members of the sheriff's office were involved in the officer-involved shootings. They were placed on administrative leave pending completion of the investigation. The following personnel were placed on administrative leave pending completion of the investigation. The Kern County Sheriff's Office Homicide Unit investigates any use of deadly force by any member of the department. Their findings have been submitted to the Kern County District Attorney's Office for criminal review. On September 7, 2021, the Kern County Sheriff's Office convened an incident review board examining the use of force in this incident. The use of force in this case was determined to be within department policy.